There's two different ways in which we can recess the head of this rivet. So we can either countersink them, which is to make the sort of, I guess, countersunk you're hole. Essentially <laughs> drilling it out. Yeah, so you're essentially drilling the, so the shape of the rivet into the metal over here. Um, these are fairly large, they're for number uh, one eighth countersunk rivets. And this is a scrap piece of metal, so these holes are not um, <laughs> particularly indicated of uh, good holes. It even says bad on the back of it. Um, or you can dimple the metal. If the metal is thin enough, um, usually under 40 thousandths, over 40 thousandths you want to uh, countersink. But if it's under 30 thousandths thick, uh, which you'll measure the thickness usually with a caliper, um, then you will dimple it with the dimple tool that we talked about. So why don't we do the following? So why don't we drill um, a couple of holes and we'll either dimple them or countersink them. Let's drill, let's call it two different holes over here. Okay. We're gonna have them reasonably spaced apart. Um, we're not really gonna be dealing with edge distance or anything like that today. Interesting. But uh, you know, it's just keep them somewhat far apart. Okay. So just a regular drill. I use these 12 volt drills in the airplane builds. A lot of people use pneumatic drills. They don't weigh that much difference and that's a lot more, I don't know, you get to move it around. It's not, you don't have a hose connected to it. This is 40? Yes, that's a 40 thousandths. A number 40? Yes, sorry, number 40. Yes, good catch. Um, so I'll usually, yeah. I'll usually use the punch tool to sort of make a, an indent where you want to do the, the rivet okay. because it helps center the drill, the yep. drill bit. I'm just going to yeah. go here somewhere in the sure. middle. Just yep. one punch or do you punch it a couple um, times? I usually do two or three. Okay. Um, I guess that's good to drill that so it doesn't really matter. There you go. Yep. Should I do another one? Sure. All right. Do one right there. Perfect. Pretty clearly see where those are. Yep. We'll just move it around. Anyways. And I've I've tried to punch and drill aluminum before. Mm -hmm. um, and do you normally just do it by feel to like when the the center of the drill is in it or so yeah. What's I, talking? I'll usually move the tip of the drill until I can sort of feel it fall in the indent very carefully. Okay. Um, and here, hold up for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So don't put a lot of pressure on, just sort of let the drill do the work. Okay. Um, and you can tell that you're straight by looking at the reflection of the drill bit on the metal. But this metal is a little yeah, smashed yeah. up and we don't care too much here. Um, and you can then see that, that it's straight. So I think it's, it's a tiny little bit that way. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, speed, does it matter? Uh, just, no. The faster the better usually. There you go. Okay. Do the second one while... While I'm at it. Okay. Perfect. So then you want to deburr the holes. So just two turns on, the... on, on each side. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely feel. Yeah, yeah there's feel one. It, right. Uh, not not a lot of pressure. Just just sort of you, you're sort of resting it on it and just do two turns. Let the blade do the work. Yeah, exactly. And you'll notice if it's... Yeah. Because you're not looking to countersink it. You're just looking to remove the, the burrs. Okay. It's a fairly common thing in, in RVs. You see new builders and they've like deburred things and it's like you can see... Everything is countersunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that? That was a little... Yeah, those, but... those feel great. Yeah, those feel good. Okay. So this, is, so this is interesting because this is a small piece that we're just doing this on. If you think about one of the big, you know, sheets over on the side of the airplane, you're doing, you know, a hundred per side, right? So you're, you, usually what I do is on the inside where I know I'm going to prime it anyway, I'll either use a piece of scotch right and just like scuff it all the way down so that I don't have to like one by one um, go <laughs> deburring it. But of course on this side, you have to go one by one. And yeah. there's different options. I also have um, a countersink bit that goes chucked in the in the oh. drill. So that's faster. So it's faster, right? It's like it's just a question of moving the drill from one to the other. Yeah. But it gives you less control. Oh, and this is a, a single flute. So single you, flute. Yeah. So you gotta be careful with it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so but the modern dance kits, you're max drilling. You don't have to you know, That's correct. That's a really good point. So the the more today's RV kits, the 12, the 14, and the 10 going forward, you don't actually do uh, have to drill everything to size because they're punched to the correct size already. Um, of course, with the prior generation kits, so my RV10 kit, for example, all the holes are punched, but they're not punched to the final size. So you have to, you click it all together and you have to drill every single hole um, with a reamer, is usually what I use because it makes a nicer hole, uh, to the proper size. But, but, but you're not punching in the You're not, right, exactly, exactly. Okay. yes. Okay, so this is nice and smooth. So let's find the, the proper size eh. dimple, which is this one. So, um, of course, every uh, manufacturer of uh, dimple dies is going to use different numbers. But I know that the uh, Cle Cleveland tools, uh, the part number is a 426-3. Um, and you also can, you know, after like a day of working with this, you can tell by size, right? So just make sure they're, they're both the dash threes. Um, and of course you can tell the fours are much bigger, right? Physically bigger. But there are uh, substructure, uh, substructure or tank dies, which are the same size, but the depth of the dimple is different. So just be careful not to use the you know a substructure or a tank die for something like this because we don't. Know. Okay, so okay. we'll just get the hand squeezer. Sometimes these get a little stuck. There we go. Um, and just push it into place. It's got a little O-ring on the end that holds it in place, and you want to close it so that it makes contact with the with the arm open about an inch. Um, so let's, okay. this is a little tight, I need to lubricate this. Let me ground. Is this the right one? Nope. There it is. So there's a nice little cutout here so that you can use a wrench to. My, um, these tools have, suffered a good bit of abuse, and the little anvil here is a little bit bent, so it's not, it's not finger smooth anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go, we're almost there. Oh, there we go. So you can feel that it stops okay. right about an inch, and it takes minimal, you know. Yeah, um, so you, you do want these so, <laughs> so it's totally loose. Yeah. Um, and as soon as it makes contact, then you'll see it's about an inch ish, yeah. and a little bit more pressure is just sort of like tightening it up. Yep. Um, and that gives you enough to that plus the thickness of the metal will give you a proper formed dimple. So okay. Good okay. job. So the how the 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 distance here is independent generally of the skin or or. Yeah. or you're normally dealing with thin enough metal that exactly really matter. right. Okay. Yes, the the metals. I think the thickest stuff that we. Uh, I'm sorry. The thickest stuff that you'll dimple is forty thousandths, so okay. up to forty thousandths. And I think the thinnest stuff is maybe twenty thousandths on the rudder skin. So, twenty thousandths difference does not doesn't make a difference yeah. here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is your technique? And um, so just uh, you know, hold open the. Hold that open. Yeah. And which which way do we want to go? It doesn't matter in this case. I guess we'll go. I guess we'll go this way because this has been our top. Yep. And then close. And this is going to basically self center. Yep. Because the pilot in the dimple die. Oh, that feels nice, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pilot in the dimple die is just a couple thou smaller than the hole. So look at that. Oh, that's perfect. And if we all right, I can build an airplane now. <laughs> and if you throw a rivet in there, you can see how it's exactly the right size. Oh yeah, that's that's isn't that incredible? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> almost exactly flush. Yeah. And just from like a hand tool that you sort of hand adjusted. To, yeah. And then once you rivet it, it'll be yeah just right. All right, I'll do the other one here.
usually the you know the part is on something yeah, yeah, or yeah. in a fixture, yeah, so yeah. you're not sort of flopping around needing three arms. This is the main squeeze, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's cammed, so it yeah. feels a little different. Okay, and how do you know if you've under dimpled? Um, usually, you just put a dimple in. Yeah. I'm um, sorry, a rivet in, and it won't look right. It won't feel right. There's also sometimes you you can look at the reflections on the on the skin, mm -hmm. and it a good set of dimple dies. These are nice dimple dies. Um, will only deform the skin exactly where the the die closed. Okay. Everything else is smooth. So you look at it. And there's the, you know, the reflection changes right there, but it's immediately back to normal. Yeah, which is uh, definitely the case here. That's always baffled me, right? Like, I look at it, and it's like, how, how can it make it so that... Like it's, it's not deforming anything except for, you know, within like a quarter yep. of an inch there. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like, you, you can go down the rabbit hole on technology of dimple dyes, but it's, you know, they've got sort of a reflex, you know, up curve on the back end of them that okay. makes it so that it does I don't know it's oh just, so when the when the metal springs back it springs back to exactly where you yeah, want it exactly <laughs> crazy isn't yeah, it yeah that's cool stay tuned for the next episode where we talk less about this and actually start squeezing some rivets <laughs>